Hello, this is the video on the web interface of the TalkTalk Talk Wi-Fi Hub, is what they call it, but it's a Sagem Fast 5364 router, or uh, the longer model number of Sagem Fast 5364.3, or dash 3.t8. Um, this is mainly so that people who have to support people using this router but they don't know what the web interface looks like can look at this video and then hopefully talk somebody through how to use it. Uh, I apologize that it's not a screen recorded version so sadly the computer that I was on uh, did not have the capacity to screen record. It was an ancient computer and I was also limited for time so uh, I'm afraid it's just me pointing my phone camera at the screen but hopefully it's good enough and eventually maybe I will get to do another one. Uh, always look at the description for the video because if there are any updates or corrections or if there's a new version of the video it will be in the description uh, and also if you want to know what the router looks like in the box um, or what the box looks like, where all the connections are, where the power button is and everything uh, there will also be a link to the video of that. So let's get going. So to log on the username is admin and then the password is on the sticker on the back of the router which is underneath the bit of card or the, the pull out plastic tab with the wireless details on it. When you log on on the TalkTalk Talk version it has a custom screen with three options. The first option gives you some basic details about your broadband. The main Wi-Fi settings page gives you some basic options like the name, Wi-Fi password and turning off and on Wi-Fi. You can also see which devices are connected to the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz radios. Going back to the three item dashboard, on the right hand side you've got manage devices which shows which things are connected and what IP addresses they have. As a link back to the Wi-Fi settings, clicking on manage advanced settings takes you to um, a page with many more options. So clicking on the top option gives you loads of details and the first page gives you loads of status information about the uh, router, the IP addresses, the Wi-Fi, the speed that you're connected, the protocol you're connected at on the uh, uh, WAN port or the DSL port. DHCP option gives you settings for changing the DHCP obviously and what IP address range your network is to use. Light control, so you can switch off the LED on the front of the device if you didn't want it to be on. And you can set a third party DNS server, so Open DNS, Google DNS, or anything you need. So the Dyn DNS function supports many providers, or it's basically the dynamic IP hostname thing. It supports no IP, which is free, which is nice because a lot of the older TalkTalk Talk routers didn't support. Uh, the only provider they supported was Dyn, D Dyn DNS and DT DNS, both of which are the same company and both of which don't do free products anymore. Uh, they also support uh, Change IP, Easy DNS, Zone Edit, and DNSOmatic.com. Uh, sadly, it doesn't seem to have a custom section, so um, you have to use one of those built in providers. The root option is unlikely that many people ever use. You can add static routes down different interfaces or different other routers. The maintenance tab gives you uh, backing up and factory resetting and restoring settings, doing firmware updates and changing the network time source and also lets you view logs. Going back to the home button and then access control, 
gives you port forwarding, firewall, DMZ, and uh, user. So port forwarding looks like it's fairly easy to do. You don't have to uh, muck about adding a game or an application first like you do on the Thompson routers. The games and applications section rather than the add rule does have some built-in uh, static rules which mean you don't have to know the ports that you want to forward which is useful for some people. Firewall section DMZ, again, not likely to be used, but could be used for games consoles or a server. And the user section is where you change the password to access the router. The internet connectivity button gives you settings on how you want it to work. So uh, the TalkTalk Talk fiber to the cabinet just uses DHCP, but if you needed to use PPPOE or PPPOA, you'd be able to select it in that screen. The Ethernet section is pretty decent. It gives you far more information than I would have thought about the state of each individual network port on the back of the router, uh, which is pretty good. Unusual for a router to give you that much information. The cog in the advanced section for Wi-Fi gives you all the settings you'd expect rather than just change name, change password. It lets you set what channel to use, what encryption method to use, whether uh, WPS button is switched on. I won't go into Mac filtering because if you're doing Mac filtering on your Wi-Fi it's a pretty weak way of securing it. Uh, on the 5 gigahertz one you have the same settings so if you wanted to have a different name for your 5 gigahertz network and a different password and you'd be able to do that it's basically just the same set of settings. If you click on a machine which is connected to your router. It lets you give it a name, change the icon, which is what the BT Hub lets you do, and uh, gives you a, an easy place to add port forwarding so you don't have to type the IP address into the port forwarding section. And then instead, if you click on back to home at the top rather than uh, the little house icon, it takes you back to the three icon dashboard or the three summary dashboard, um, the non advanced section. So if this video has been useful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing. YouTube seems to be counting channels and allowing channels to monetize on subscriber numbers, so uh, if you could subscribe, you don't have to have notifications on, but a subscription would be really helpful. Thank you very much.